Hello, we will be presenting today on the topic of comparing search algorithms on the snake game. This project was programmed by both of us, Ben Greenfield and I, Ben Plazic, in the Python programming language. And it's been an ongoing project over the past few weeks for our AI class at the University of New Haven. So our project overview, uh, we looked at the differences in different uh, search algorithms based on efficiency and success for playing the game of Snake. And specifically, we looked at DFS, BFS, A-Star, and UCS. So the game starts as normal as a normal Snake grid. So slowly it gets filled up with your tail. So these tail pieces are treated as grid pieces. And these are also considered to be our walls for our search agent to navigate around. So after implementing each search algorithm, we ran a series of trials in each one and generated data from doing that. So in the end, we ended up making bar graphs, text file data, and line graphs of our completed data. So as a summary of the overall code in our snake.py, we had the game code, which was inspired from other online free resources. And then on top of that, we implemented our search algorithms and the necessary functions to make these algorithms work, which we will go view now. To begin, I'll show that we can still play the game as normal and what the game looks like. So by using the arrow keys on the keyboard, we are able to control our little snake player. And these green pieces here are the food. So we are able to go around the field and collect food as we please. And we are able to wrap around the screen if necessary, but only in player mode. In the AI search algorithm, the agent is not allowed to go off the grid. There's no wrapping allowed. So as a small example of showing the different search algorithms, we'll go in order from BFS, A-star, UCS, DFS, and then we'll look at some of the code. So we can see here, this should be BFS running, and we can see kind of the behavior follows. These are all random food positions generated, and each algorithm will follow the same. Yep, so now this is A-star, and A-star kind of likes, likes to follow diagonal lines based on the cost and heuristic functions we've implemented. UCS is also very similar to A-star. We can see that in the diagonal patterns it follows. And that'll fill, finish up. And now we have BFS, or sorry, DFS, the slowest of the group, as it likes to explore the deepest connection to every node. So it will go up and down, up and down until it reaches that node. So you can see the results of doing that. So we have the four search algorithms implemented within our code. All of them follow a similar design pattern. We can look at DFS, where DFS works off of a stack. So when we have our stack, we start with a getting start state, and we follow the generalized DFS algorithm, where we check to see if our stack is empty. And if it's not, we look through current states, and we check each state. The most interesting part would probably be the getting successors, as we need to check at each position whether we have a possible successor, successor to go to, what direction that is, what position, and what cost that is. For BFS, it's also very similar, although it uses a queue instead, which makes it different from the two. And from the reasoning of that is that the queue and stack, they are accessed in different orders. So that provides the different uh, searching methods that we've seen. So again, this just looks through all of them and we look through the get successors. And then for A star search, it's a little different where we have a cost and a heuristic we decided to use a Manhattan heuristic, which simply just finds the distance between our current position and the food location, which is the goal state. And it finds that in a Manhattan matter. So we use that as our, as our uh, heuristic. So A star uses a priority queue and most, most, most of the setup is the same, except just for at the end, we're also incorporating cost and an H cost. So the H cost takes the cost that is implemented in our get successors, and we also add in our Manhattan heuristic. And that's how we get that one. For UCS, uses UCS is also very similar to A star, except it only uses the cost, the path cost, instead of a heuristic. So in here, instead of having an H cost, we just add cost plus cost and then cost for the priority. Oops. So and very quickly, we will go over the generate successors function as that was one of the bigger parts of writing this code. So here we have the get successor. So get successor takes in the current position of where we are. So 
we have to remember for our snake agent that our own body turns into walls. As we progress throughout the game, we will need to take account of our own body as with snake, the fail condition is hitting yourself. Or in for our search agent's case, also running off the screen as we do not allow wrapping. So for getting the successors, we generate a successor list and we look at making possible moves. For these possible moves, X and Y only one can move in either direction at a time. We cannot move in to adjacent squares. So either Y moves up or down or X moves left or right. So we do this by looking at each move set. So X has a set of moves and Y has a set of moves. And we go through each one and we follow a generalized kind of generate successor state where we look to see if the next state we're looking to generate is within our own set of walls or our own body. If it's in within our body, we want to skip this as that is not useful to us and we don't want to run into ourselves. We also add in a cost here for the algorithms such as UCS and ASTAR. Uh, for our cost, we decided to use a Euclidean cost to avoid using just a zero trivial. While this may not be the best implementation, we just wanted to see a little bit of a different action of just taking zero. So Euclidean cost simply just takes a position and goal and calculates the straight Euclidean cost and returns that. We decided to prioritize right and left movement for our agent just to, again, just to get a little bit different data so we could see the differences. So to do that, we just divide by two as we want to look for the lowest cost possible. So if right and left get a lower cost, the agent will take that first. So we can see with the up and down movements, we just get the normal Euclidean cost and dividing it is not taken into account. And so now I will take it back over to Ben. So to continue off from Ben, I'm going to now go ahead and discuss the code involved with the run search function and the pandas and data frame code, which produces the analytics that we used um, to make sense of this project. So to begin with the run search function, it begins right, right here in our program. So run search right off the bat, it, it basically runs the run search, the algorithms defined by Ben earlier before. So it goes in the order of DFS search, BFS search, A star search to UCS search. So each one of these searches is being executed in a for loop that goes, iterates through the numbers zero to the length of the food positions array. The food positions array is seeded at runtime with a random list of food positions. And for every execution of run search, a new food position array will be used. So it will go until the food position array has been reached the end. And if it is, if it is dead, it will return back to this function. So those are the run search algorithms. Now to continue, we need to calculate the scores. So to begin, we, we enumerate through DFS actions, BFS actions, A star actions, and UCS actions. Each of these is equivalent to the sum of the actions list. So to make sense of the actions list, I will scroll up to where they are defined. So they are defined as global essentially. And up here, you can also denote the food positions array and the function in which um, it is seeded with the random values um, in terms of X and Y. Um, so to get back to my original point, the actions list, it's it's enumerated, I believe, BFS, DFS, A star, and UCS. And the actions list will contain all of the actions that the snake has taken within its own runtime. So to get back to where I was before, uh, that's what's happening there. It's essentially the sum of all the actions. The total actions will be returned out to the, the output screen. And then after that, the raw scores will be printed out to the screen, which is, which is essentially the number of food that was eaten by each snake agent according to each algorithm. So in the order of DFS, BFS, A star, and UCS. So essentially, with this information, we calculate a score. So this score was derived by me and Ben. And this score favors scores that are high so having eaten a large amount of food objects on the screen and actions that are low so we're looking for a snake agent 
that is able to find the food in the least amount of turns um, with the least amount of actions. Um, so we multiply times 100 to make it more digestible by the eye, and we go ahead and print to the output screen. So now, to continue on, we write everything that just happened to the file. So we're writing our list of actions, essentially, our, our scores that were recorded for each search algorithm, and then finally, our calculated scores. So our calculated scores is telling us, basically, in the scope of this project, how well did we do? How well did this agent do compared to the other agents? Um, the score has no, no meaning beyond that, the relative score. So moving on, I will now get to the pandas section of the code. So in this pandas section of the code, we begin off with the data. So we round off the calculated scores array. Um, so for index 0, 1, 2, 3, we do for every search algorithm. And we essentially make a bar graph. This bar graph will show us, um, I believe, with the x will be the type of algorithm used. So again, BFS, DFS, A star, UCS. And our y axis will be the score received from that algorithm. So moving on. F now, for essentially every action that is taken by an algorithm, so for each, each type of algorithm, there will be a line graph associated with it. And the line graph will have a value of x being the score and i believe y being the searching algorithm so this will be looked into more if it's unclear now it will be cleared up quite soon and this is essentially done so the actions are considered for every search algorithm and they are outputted as a plot and again that will be shown at the end and that is it that is it for our run search method now now, to look at an upper, higher up level, we will be doing a run multiple. So this will allow us to essentially look at run search, do a run search X amount of times, and, and see the output of our data. That will be done shortly um, after I discuss uh, the rest of run multiple here. So there will be a complete average that is taken at the end of our execution of the program. And this average will be displayed in a bar graph. So now to transition over. I will go back to the slides. So that is our code summary. Now to get to these analytics, this was generated by our program. So what you see here is for each searching algorithm, you can see in the blue DFS, in the blue again, BFS, and so on. So for UCS, UCS and A star, you can see the, the line plots. So again, the Y is the number of actions and the score is the X. So as the game progresses, you can see the amount of actions that the agent took to reach the food. Now, where you see this baselining here in the graph, that signifies that the agent has died. It has baselined and it has no hope of coming back from the dead. So that is the actions. Now to move on, this is our scores. So in one sample run here, this is the output of our scores in bar graph format. So our D DFS, it ran with a 9.91. Our BFS ran with a 7.28. Our A star ran with a 6.53. Our UCS ran with a 6.69. So we did calculate more precision with these numbers. It's just rounded off for ease of viewing. Um, for more rounding, you can see the text file that we've generated, which I will get to very shortly. Um, but anyways, I'll reiterate a few things before we move on to the execution of the program. Um, now here we're looking at our calculated score. As I said before, our score, which is the number of food eaten divided by the sum of all actions taken by the agent times 100 will give us the calculated score. So going back a slide, that's basically what you see here in the bottom left. And on the right, this is basically the same thing but it's computed based on an average across five runs. So due to viewing limitations in our PyCharm application, five was about the best we could get. Um, so this is likely our most presentable form of data from this presentation. Um, th this tells us that DFS did the most poorly and BFS did the best. So I will now go and actually run the program um, for however many times I want. 
I'll, I'll run it for the sake of time two times. Um, go ahead and execute. And as I execute, you can see the snake agent moving quite quickly. This is due to a variable we assigned, um, the speed. You, you can assign it to move slowly or quickly. Um, this is done just for the sake of, of viewing. And as you can see, as I'm doing this, Pandas is populating data frames on, on the right. And also you can see in the command line, there's output. And this output is essentially mirrored to this text file. So this text file tells us the actions taken by an agent, the run number. So we started zero, work our way up. In this case, it went to one. Um, there's a date associated with it, a timestamp. Um, our raw, raw score, which is the number of food objects eaten, or calculated score, which I have reiterated many times before. And you can see the same thing for the other runs. Now on the right, you can see where we actually got our information from. It's fully generated from pandas. So you can see in this run, we have we have these scores. Um, UCS and A-star seem to behave very similarly. You can see the baseline as I scroll through. Um, there should be an average right here. So you, you can see our UCS came with 6.66, A-star came with 6.72, so on. And that's the output. So going back to the presentation now, in talking about our search algorithms, I will hand it off to Ben. So overall, we can compare these search algorithms. So we could see in the end, BFS statistically performs the best over all runs. So we laid out a little bit summary of how each algorithm kind of performed. So DFS ran very slowly and it took lots of actions. Most of the times these actions would range up into the 4,000s as a total. And it almost always got the lowest food score, which is why this algorithm performed very low on our chart. As you can see here, we had 0.89 for DFS, which is not, which is very low compared to the others. Uh, BFS ran very quickly and it did so linearly as in when the snake agent went to go find food, it would move in straight lines. It would align itself to go hit the food, unlike B DFS, which it, where it had to go up and down, up and down. So BFS also got a very good food score and also did so with low action count. So A star runs also very quickly in diagonally, as in this case, instead of moving in straight lines, it tends to follow the adjacent line due to the Euclidean and Manhattan costs and heuristics that we use. So this also got a very good food score, but it, but also got some more actions than BFS generated, usually around the 2000 range. So UCS was also very similar to A star many times, where it ran quickly and diagonally, and it often got a very good food score, and it also had actions. The actions are usually very similar to A star, but the score is often a little lower. So in the end, we could see that BFS clearly performed the best over our multiple runs. And we could see this by doing this with the average and the other runs that we had. And this one, it was even higher at 7.28. But overall, BFS was the best algorithm to use for completing a game of Snake. So here are just some of the sources that we use to find the uh, base code of the game of Snake. Everything else will be on our GitHub, which will be linked to below. But otherwise, thank you for watching our presentation. We had a lot of fun working on this project.